One of the types of evolution that represents a real challenge to the Christian faith is macroevolution. The idea that evolutionary mechanisms can transform one biological group into another biological group with radically different properties. Now scientists will claim that evidence for macroevolution comes from the fossil record. The fossil record is a sampling of life's history. And many scientists argue that when we look at the different life forms that existed at different times in Earth's history, it is providing us with clear evidence that life must have evolved, that life must have transformed from one life form into another through a series of successive intermediate forms. And to put it more formally, what scientists would predict, if indeed evolution is true, is that when we look at the fossil record, we should see gradual evolutionary transformation, and we should see innumerable numbers of transitional forms documenting this evolutionary process. But the fact of the matter is, the fossil record doesn't look anything like that. Instead of seeing gradual unfolding of life, we see sudden appearance of new life forms, new biological groups showing up explosively in the fossil record. We see the absence or the near absence of transitional intermediates. And instead of seeing gradual change over time, we see stasis. That is, once these new forms appear, they remain ch unchanged over vast periods of time. One of the most remarkable examples of sudden appearances of new forms in the fossil record is something known as the Cambrian Explosion. This happens about 540 million years ago when the fossil record shows a veritable explosion of complex multicellular animal life. For the first time in Earth's history, we see anywhere from 50 to 80 percent of the animal phyla that have ever existed, and they show up in a window of time that is arguably close to two to three million years in duration. Virtually out of nowhere on the surface of the Earth come this, it comes this incredible diversification of complex animal forms. And when we look at the fossil record, we see prior to the Cambrian explosion nothing that looks like uh, complex animal life whatsoever. It's life showing up virtually out of nowhere. Simon Conway Morris, an evolutionary biologist and one of the leading scientists who study the Cambrian explosion said this, William Buckland knew about it, Charles Darwin characteristically agonized over it, and still we do not fully understand it. It, of course, is a seemingly abrupt appearance of animals in the Cambrian explosion. The Cambrian explosion just simply makes no sense from an evolutionary perspective. And in fact, this is what Charles Darwin wrote about the Cambrian explosion. And this comes from the book on the origin of species that Darwin wrote where he advances his theory of evolution. And in this book, Darwin actually has a couple of chapters where he deals with problems for his theory. And one of the problems was the Cambrian explosion. This is what Darwin writes. There is another and allied difficulty which is much more serious. I allude to the manner in which species belonging to several of the main divisions of the animal kingdom suddenly appear in the lowest known fossiliferous rocks. To the question, why do we not find rich fossiliferous deposits belonging to these assumed earliest periods prior to the Cambrian system, I can give no satisfactory answer. In other words, in Darwin's day, the Cambrian explosion was well known. The idea that animal life appears explosively in the fossil record without any evolutionary history preceding it. And Darwin hoped that future studies would actually uncover those missing transitional forms. So here we are, 150 years later, and the fossil record looks identical today as it looked in Darwin's time. Now to be clear, we know of many, many more fossils than Darwin knew in his day, but the nature of the Cambrian explosion is still the same as it was in Darwin's day. The sudden appearance of complex animal forms that show up virtually out of nowhere. In fact, even the atheist Richard Dawkins in his book The Blind Watchmaker laments about the Cambrian explosion. He says this, the Cambrian strata of rocks vintage about 600 million years are the oldest ones which we find most of the major invertebrate groups. And we find many of them already in an advanced state of evolution the very first time they appear. It's as though they were just planted there without any evolutionary history. I would look at the Cambrian explosion as not only a significant challenge to the evolutionary paradigm, a challenge that comes from the fossil record, 
a fossil record that supposedly justifies biological evolution and the idea of macroevolution specifically, but it also provides us with evidence for the work of a creator. The sudden appearance of complex animal life is consistent with a creator's involvement in life's history. But it's not just simply limited to the Cambrian explosion. Every time there is biological innovation that happens in the history of life on Earth, it happens explosively. With regard to the origin of life, life appears explosively virtually out of nowhere about 3.8 billion years ago on the surface of the Earth. There's something known as the eukaryotic Big Bang when eukaryotic single-celled organisms appear for the first time about 2 billion years ago. And after the Cambrian explosion, every time there is biological innovation with regard to animal life on, on Earth, it happens as a radiation, as paleontologists describe them, where there's an explosive diversification of new forms. There are radiations for the fish. There are radiations for amphibians, for reptiles, for birds, and for mammals. And these radiation events reflect, I believe, the involvement of a creator and, again, challenge the notion of biological evolution and the gradual unfolding of life on Earth and the gradual emergence of new biological groups. It's also interesting that when we look at the fossil record, we see extinctions. There are many mass extinction events that we document in life's history. The Permian extinction as one example, the KT extinction where the dinosaurs disappeared and shortly thereafter we see the mammalian radiation. And what's interesting is that every time we look at the major mass extinction events on the surface of the Earth, we see that these mass extinctions are co closely followed by mass origination events where entirely new life forms appear entirely new ecosystems appear. They appear explosively, again virtually out of nowhere. And so again, this pattern does not fit the pattern we would expect to see if biological evolution and macroevolution specifically was indeed a fact. Instead, the fossil record looks much more like a creator is orchestrating life's history for his purpose. So the point again is this. The fossil record cited as evidence for macroevolution is anything but evidence for macroevolution. Instead, it points to the work and the necessity of a creator to explain the history of life on Earth.